Now, if the country does go over the fiscal cliff, many worry there could be major cutbacks to entitlement programs like Social Security and Medicare, and also programs the government uses to keep you healthy. Joining us now, registered nurse and Republican Congresswoman from Tennessee, Diane Black, and a former California Insurance Commissioner and Democratic Congressman, John Garamendi. Welcome to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having us. All right, Congresswoman, I want to start with you. Uh, one of the things that we're keeping an eye on, something that's gotten caught up in this whole fiscal cliff discussion, the issue of doctor reimbursement fees under Medicare. If nothing happens, uh, those are going to drop by 27% come January 1st, and we know a lot of doctors are already limiting the number of Medicare patients they'll take in. If they don't get those reimbursements dollars up, what happens next? You know, this is the reason why we need to get very serious about doing a reform over our Medicare, because we know that we're not going to cut doctors by 27 percent. If we were to do that, there would be no access for our seniors, and that's definitely not what we want to do. We have come to the table with a program that we think is very reasonable about doing some structural reform to Medicare, which has just got to happen. Otherwise, the president has the IPAB in place in his Obamacare, which is going to be a panel of 15 uh, unelected bureaucrats who will be making those decisions about where health care will be paid for. And we know that will be on the backs of our providers, which does not help seniors to get access or quality care. And Congressman Garamendi, as a former insurance commissioner, you probably understand these issues better than most. What about the issue of entitlement reform, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security? Should they be on the table as these discussions are going on right now? Well, first of all, Social Security is not an imminent problem at all. In about uh, maybe seven, eight to ten years, there is going to be a problem. But right now, Social Security is not even remotely connected to the current deficit. It's a separate, a separate program funded separately in its own trust fund. So that needs to be dealt with separately. With regard to Medicare and Medicaid, those programs are floating on the overall inflation rate in health care. And what we need to do, and this was a major part of the Affordable Health Care Act, was to bend the cost curve to bring down the inflation rate in health care. And in fact, in the last two years, the inflation rate in Medicare has been remarkably low, much to the surprise of everybody, somewhere in the 2 well, a 3 percent range. That's incredible. A uh, part of that is due to the Affordable Health Care Act and undoubtedly to others. With regard to the doctor uh, payments, that's an annual problem here in Washington. started back in the early 2000s and has continued to be an annual problem. It's called the doctor fix. Um, I guess for budgeting reasons way back when, they decided that they would only fund that increase in doctor payments for one year, and then every year it comes up, and in every year it grows because of the general inflation in health care. It needs to be fixed permanently as part of the Medicare uh, programs that are out there. And be very, very careful about restructuring, because restructuring is another word for what we talked about during the uh, campaign, and that was putting uh, med ending Medicare as we know it and simply going to a voucher system. We don't want to do that, but we definitely need to deal with Medicare and the cost without changing Shannon, the benefits. Shannon, that is not correct. I <laughs> <laughs> I've got to correct my colleague. It is not a voucher program. It is a premium support. And just because you continue to say the same thing over and over again doesn't make it true. It is not a voucher program. And I want to also correct him that Social Security is not a problem. You know, we don't talk about the unfunded liabilities. We talk about $16 trillion in debt. We have 85 trillion dollars in unfunded liabilities and Social Security, Medicare, and federal benefits uh, for our employees. And so we don't even talk about that. They don't talk about the one trillion dollars over 10 years that are additional ca uh, taxes that come out of Obamacare that hit the middle class. So these are all things that they don't want to talk about. They want them off the table, but they are true, and we have to, as m mature adults, be talking about the truth of what's going on in Washington. All right, Congress, well, Congress, well, Congressman, I want to make that. sure I give you the, yeah, the final it, word in here. In fact, I did say Social Security is an issue that has to be dealt with. Uh, there is a problem. It will occur somewhere between seven to eight years out. But, we, but it is not part of the deficit problem. Kick the can down there, the road. <laughs> well, if you want to deal with it today, we can, but it, it's, it cannot... It is not part of the current deficit issue at all. It is a separate issue, and we must be very, very careful. You may call it premium support, but nonetheless, it... That proposal in Medicare radically changes the Medicare program and simply tosses it over to the private health insurance companies. And I'll tell you, I have worked That's with the private either. health insurance companies for a That's long, long time. Well, I'm sorry, but it, it does happen to be what premium support is all about. 
you are supporting the premiums for the private health insurance companies. Call it a voucher, call it premium support, but in either case, it terminates Medicare as we know it, and that's a serious problem for seniors. All right, that's we have perfect. to leave it there, and, and unfortunately, I think we're leaving on a, uh, many points of disagreement, not agreement. We know you both have a that's lot of work to do right. uh, over on the Hill, so we thank you for taking time out for us today, and we wish you all the best in finding a compromise. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon.